Hello, and welcome to this Kyle Getting Started video. First, go to www.kyle.com and download MDK ARM. Install it and go to www.kyle.com slash support slash man slash docs slash license if you need information about the Kyle licensing process. Now let's start with a simple project based on the STM32 Cube F4 package running on the STM32 F429 Discovery Board, STM32 F429i Disco. First, download the STM32 Cube F4 package from the ST website. Go to www.st.com and search for STM32 Cube F4. Click the STM32 Cube F4 link and search for the STM32 Cube F4 software package. Save and unzip it to a local directory. Now open a simple project running on the STM32F429i Disco. Let's take the example of this GPIO program toggling an LED through an external interrupt generated by pushing the user button. The MDK ARM project is located in the MDK ARM directory. Open the project file and launch a compilation to verify your environment setup. A successful compilation means that your setup is correct. Now let's browse the options for target. The device tab allows selecting the device part number. If the targeted device does not appear in the list, click this link to install the software package for your device. Select the relevant software package from this page, in our case, the STM32F4 series. Save it to a local directory. Now let's install the downloaded software package. Now let's verify that your target device is available from the device list. Let's browse the target tab. The MCU target name is shown here. The memory address boundaries are configured through these fields. And this one defines the oscillator frequency of the target device within the application, 8 MHz in our case. Check the Use Microlib option to optimize compiling performance. Now let's look at the Output tab. You can define your own object output directory path and rename the executable file. Do not forget to check the Create Executable option as well as the Debug Information box to help you during your debug session. To enable the Go to Function Definition feature of the editor, check the Browse Information option. Now let's go to the Listing tab. It is recommended to check all the .map file options as shown here to get the maximum useful information for debugging, like the function call tree, or to evaluate the code performance, like the memory footprint. The User tab can be used to run external codes at different compilation steps, for instance, to format text or to check coding rules compliancy. Let's now browse the C, C++ tab. The compiler global defines can be set here. The main compiler control options can be managed here. The include files relative path can be configured here. This field allows specifying the compiler directives that are not available from the above checkboxes. All compiler control directives are summarized here. A similar tab is available for assembly directives. Check this option from the Linker tab to use the default memory mapping defined in the Target tab. To define your own sections, uncheck this option, edit your scatter file, and enter the corresponding path here. Now let's browse the Debug tab. The Debug tool type and parameters are configured here. Select your Debug tool. In our case, it is the STLink V2, and configure it. Configure here the single wire debug interface and set the maximum clock frequency. If you use the trace recording, 
The corresponding parameters must be set here. The Flash Download sub-tab allows selecting the loader stored into the device RAM for Flash programming. Now let's open a debug session. The code is automatically loaded as defined in the debug settings. The program stops at the beginning of the main function. Now let's execute the code. The board LED3 toggles each time the user push button is pressed. To stop program execution, click this button. Now reset the application. You can see that the program jumps to the beginning of the system init routine. Set a breakpoint at the beginning of the main routine by clicking the line where you want to stop and run the program again. The program stops at the breakpoint. Step into this function. and execute the function step by step. Now step out of the function, and again run the application. Stop the application execution and open the Peripherals Registers window. Please note that the program is stopped here, after PG-13 and 14 initialization. Now we will see how the changes of PG-13 and PG-14 output states impact LED-3 and 4. Setting or resetting PG-13 ODR makes LED-4 toggle. Setting or resetting PG-14 ODR makes LED-3 toggle. We have seen in this video the main Kyle MDK ARM features. To learn more about the Kyle MDK ARM, please visit www.kyle.com. Further information on STM32 Cube, please visit www.st.com/stm32cube. Thank you for your attention.